Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday School. We hope you're all keeping well and you've had a really good week. Did you listen out for the code word this morning? Well, listen carefully and during this lesson, you'll hear another code word. We really look forward to receiving your sheets every week, so keep with going with those. It's lovely to hear from you. In this series, we've been learning about what we call the early church. It was the time after the Lord Jesus had died and then he rose and went back to heaven. And the people that followed him and loved him and knew him and had seen him, they were left. But God hadn't forgotten them or left them all alone. He sent his Holy Spirit to be with them and to guide them and help them. And they began to establish or start the church. Many wonderful miracles happened to show that God was with them and many people believed in the Lord Jesus. Now today we're learning about an, an Italian man called Cornelius who was an officer in the Roman army. He was a centurion in charge of 80 men and he would have looked uh, like this. Cornelius would have been able to read and write and centurions had to be good, trustworthy men, people who you could really look up to. They had to be over 30, so they'd old enough to have learned a lot of things. And perhaps uh, you've learned about the Romans or the centurions at school. The Romans were a very powerful group and they kept conquering land and their empire grew and grew. Later on, they even took over parts of Africa and Asia. Here's a map showing the places they controlled. You can see that's been shaded in. They even invaded England and some of the places they built are here, still here today. You may have seen some of them on a school trip. Well, as you can imagine, a lot of people hated the Romans because they were taking over people's land and making people do things the Roman way. The Romans had lots of different strange gods that they worshipped. Now, you'll remember that God had always warned his people, the Jews, not to copy the other people or nations around them who didn't trust the true and living God and that they must be separate from them. And we call those people Gentiles, anyone who was not a Jew. So God wanted the Jews to be separate and to be very careful. And at the time of Cornelius, the Jewish people thought that God would only bless them and no one else. They wouldn't go near anyone who was not a Jew and they made up their own rules on keeping separate. They even thought if you touch someone who wasn't a Jew, if you touched a Gentile, it would make you unclean. So here was Cornelius, a soldier from Italy, living far away from home. He had to go there because his job was with the army in a place where many Jewish people lived and it was a place called Caesarea. Now I'm sure you can guess why the Romans called the town Caesarea. It was after their Roman emperor, Caesar. Well, God was going to show these Jewish people that he wants all people to know him, not just one group, and he was going to use Cornelius to show this. Now, let's see what happened. So here we have Cornelius, he was a good man. Did you hear what the Bible said about him? It says he prayed to God and he didn't just pray. He also gave money and he gave money to the Jewish people. He respected them. And when he had seen them and how they worshipped the true God, he knew that was right and he loved them. And he even gave his money for, to them. We might say he was a genuine person, not pretending to be good, but he really meant it. He feared God, too, and he was devout. That means he was serious. He cared about the truth and doing what was right. He had a real concern to please God and he knew it was wrong to worship all the strange gods of the Romans. And so Cornelius had turned away from them. And even though he was rich and important and powerful and people had to obey his orders, he was willing to pray to God and ask God to help him. So Cornelius was a good man. I wonder if you're a bit like Cornelius. Perhaps you go to church, you know that there are many false gods that people worship and you know that there is one true living God. Perhaps you read your Bible and sometimes you pray and try to be good and maybe you really want to do your best at home and obey your parents when you can and you go to school and you do your best there too and you want to please God. Well, Cornelius was about to get a very big surprise because one day an angel came to him and the angel told him something quite amazing. He told him to send for a man called Peter, 
who lived in Joppa by the seaside and told him where he would be. And then the angel said, Peter will come and tell you what you ought to do. So there was something Cornelius needed to do, something he hadn't done, but he'd prayed. He'd even given money to the poor. He feared God, but there was something he hadn't done and something that he needed to do. Well, Cornelius immediately knew he must obey what the angel said. And so he sent two servants and a soldier to go and get Peter. All this time, God was preparing Peter in a very special way. And God had begun to show Peter that Jesus had come for everyone, people of all nations, not just the Jewish people. This was new to Peter and he had to trust God. And as these men arrived and told him that a man called Cornelius had sent for him, Peter knew immediately that he must go and that God wanted him to talk to this man, this Gentile, this Roman officer about the Lord. So Peter went quickly. Well, when he got to Cornelius's house, he found a group there. Cornelius had invited his friends and his family, his household were there all gathered together. And Peter came in and Cornelius fell down and worshipped him. And Peter said, no, don't worship me, stand up. I'm just a man. Well, Cornelius, it showed he really respected Peter and he wanted to hear what Peter was going to say. And so he said, tell us what God wants us to know. And Cornelius listened eagerly. And that's our key word, our code word, listened. It's so important to listen. And Cornelius was desperate to hear what it was that God wanted him to know. So Peter began to talk to him and all of the people gathered in his house, they were all listening and ready to hear. Well, what did Peter say to them? Well, first of all, he told them, it's true, God judges everyone the same. And he doesn't have one rule for one and one rule for another group. God doesn't have favourites and only one group of people he will speak to. But he has standards for everyone. He calls all people from anywhere and everywhere to follow him. Do you know that? No one who comes to God will ever be turned away. It doesn't make any difference where you were born, who your parents are, how clever you are, whether you're from a Christian family or not, um, how old you are or how young you are. We're all the same, we're all sinners and God calls all of us to turn to him. Well, Peter told them other things too. He told them how Jesus had come, how he'd lived a perfect life and many people had seen the amazing miracles he had done, healing the sick, feeding 5,000 people with a few loaves and fish. You remember some of the miracles we've learned about and he could do those things because he is God and he can do anything. Now, Cornelius would have heard about these things because people were talking about them in the towns and cities. But Peter told Cornelius that these things really had happened and that he and other people had seen them for themselves and they knew it was true. And then Peter told them how Jesus had suffered and died on the cross and how God had raised him up on the third day and that Jesus is the judge of all people and that one day we will all be judged and those who are dead and those who are alive when Jesus returns, will be judged. You and me and everyone, we must face the Lord and give an answer about how we've lived and what we've done. And finally, Peter told him that all who believe in him, in the Lord Jesus, would have their sins forgiven and will be given eternal life. Their sins, all the wrong that, that they've done and all the good and perfect things they haven't done and they should have done, all of the sins would be covered by the Lord Jesus for those who believe in him. Well, as Peter explained all these things and how Jesus had to die to take the punishment for sin, the Holy Spirit opened Cornelius's eyes and others that were listening. And that means they really understood for the first time these things. This Roman soldier realised that however much he prayed, however good he was, however sorry he was for his sins, it would never be enough to please God because all those sins were still there. Just think about it for a moment. If you throw a ball and smash someone's window, you can cry all day, you can say you're really sorry and really mean it, 
but that window's still broken. Being sorry doesn't mend the window. And when Cornelius thought about what Peter said, he realised that he needed to trust in what the Lord Jesus had done for him. He couldn't take away his own sins. Cornelius had to trust in what the Lord Jesus had done. And he willingly did this and he gave his life to God. And how happy he was. He knew that he need not fear when he would be judged because the Lord Jesus would stand for him and God would accept him because of what Jesus had done. And many others that day realised this too. And Peter saw and understood that this message was for all people everywhere, Gentiles and Jews. Jesus had come to be the saviour of anyone who will trust him. So what can we do? Well, we can be like Cornelius and give our life to God. We can repent of our sins and say, Lord, I'm not just sorry for my sins, but I turn away from them. And Lord, I give you my whole life and I will live for you forever. Now we've got somebody who's going to tell us a little bit about how they trusted the Lord for themselves. Hello, uh, my name's Robert and some of you may already know me. You may have seen me at church or Sunday school before. Um, I've always come to church every Sunday along with my family. But it was only a short while ago, um, less than a year actually, when I became a Christian. I've always enjoyed going to church, singing hymns and seeing friends. And I knew that it was the right thing to do, to worship God and to keep Sunday special. I believed the Bible lessons that I was taught about Jesus and how he came to earth and could save someone from their sins. Even though I believed that this was true, I knew deep down that I wasn't a Christian and that I hadn't trusted God for myself. When I became older, I heard some sermons and Christians t Christian talks which challenged me. They made me wonder why I couldn't call myself a Christian. I knew that this was because that I didn't want God to rule my life. I wanted to be in control of my own future. But at the same time, I felt troubled, hearing about my sin and knowing that I didn't have real peace in my heart. Soon after, about this time last year, I was away from home with some other Christians and I heard some lessons from the Bible. At this point, I knew that I couldn't keep going on, not believing in God and not trusting in him. So one evening, I let God come into my heart and I trusted and believed that he would save me. Knowing that it was true and that I was saved has given me so much joy. It is wonderful to know God's forgiveness and that I am safe in him forever. So you see, the Lord is still working today. The Romans have gone. Many things have changed. We're all uh, living now in a pandemic, but God is still the same. All over the world, God is still calling people to trust him. Have you trusted him? Trust him, give him your life, call upon him. And like Cornelius, you can be forgiven too. The Bible says, for there is no difference between Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs>